Interface Video presents Fairhope Hospice Today. Brought to you by Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care. Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan. Fairfield Medical Center. The Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities. Dagger Law. And the Frank E. Smith Funeral Home. Welcome to Fairhope Hospice Today. I'm Kristen Glazier, President and CEO here at Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, home of the Pickering House. Happy New Year, welcome to January, and today you're gonna see something a little different. I'm on my own. I, I wanted to really take some time today to just stop, about, stop and talk about the new year, what that means, and I wanna share something a little different with you today. So, you know, as we know, and we hear on commercials and we talk with our family and friends about January being the start of a new year and everybody should set a goal or set a resolution and, and just to make themselves feel better, for, you know, to have a nice change. But sometimes the idea of starting something fresh is very stressful. It can be overwhelming, it can be intimidating. I think a lot of people feel that they have to do this through the new year, they really have to come up with a new way to live their life and to make changes. So, you know, this year for you, maybe your fresh start will be to focus on yourselves, um, on your health, or on your work-life balance. Those things are really hard. They're very important, but they're very difficult to do. I've thought a lot about this and how this will affect me and maybe what I want to do as I start into the new year. And I thought my work goal here will be for me to focus on our staff. So I thought I would do that today with you. You know, today our show is, like I said, gonna be a little different and we're gonna be highlighting some of our staff, some testimonies that they've provided to us. In October, we always hold our annual education day where all of our staff, all of our team, we, we come together and we provide education to them just to really keep them up to date on the new changes, uh, their skills, and just to make sure that re we as Fairhope employees are all on the same page. We had a really nice opportunity to ask some of the employees to step in and really provide their why. We wanted to know why they're here. Why are you employees? What, what drew you here to Fairhope to work with us and to help us take care of our families? So as you're gonna see here shortly, we are gonna to present to you some of those testimonials. Some employees have been here with us for a short time. Some have been here with us for a really long time. But what we did find is that most of all of our staff have experienced some type of care or been touched in some way from Fairhope, from Fairhope Hospice. So really what that means is that we have taken care of someone in their family, in their circle, and really just been able to touch their lives in some way. So I wanna take one second and give you our phone number. If you need more information on Fairhope Hospice, the care we provide, how to become a volunteer, even how to become a staff member, please call 740-654-7077. Feel free to go to our website, fairhopehospice.org, and certainly go to our Facebook page. Like us on Facebook and follow all the wonderful, exciting things that we do every day. So I'm gonna ask you to think about something. When you think about hospice care, I ask that you think about Fairhope. You know, in the past, we've talked a lot about hospice and what hospice care is. How do you qualify for hospice? How is it paid? What do the doctors feel? Um, how, do, how are the doctors involved? And I've said before that all hospices have certain regulations that they have to follow, certain guidelines, just like any other agency or, or job, you have regulations that you have to follow. But what I'm asking you right now is to really think about Fair Hope. You know, Fair Hope is different. Um, we care for our patients from our heart. We care for our patients because they're, they're in our community, they're in our lives, they're important to us. And so when you think about hospice, I want you to think about Fair Hope. And when you watch these segments today and this testimony, I want you to think about those staff members caring for your family, for your loved ones, you know that they're here for the right reasons. They're here because their hearts have called them to be here with us and to take care of your family members. 
And so I really want you to be able to look at and see the passion and the heart that our staff have when they take care of your loved ones. You know, one thing that I always say is that when we care for hospice patients and those patients who are approaching end of life, we have one chance to do this the right way. And so it's very important. We don't, we don't get another chance to, to meet your needs and to take good care and to provide that really personal, loving touch to your family. So when you call on Fairhope, you are gonna get all of our efforts and our heart and our energy to complete our mission. And that mission is to give you good quality care, compassionate care, at the end of life. So what I'd like for you to do now is to sit tight, take a look at these wonderful testimonies that are going to be provided to you from our staff. If you feel like you would like to be a part of our Fairhope team, please call. There's a spot for everyone. Um, we will look at your talents and your treasures and your, your time, you, either as a volunteer or as an employee. So please call 740-654-7077 and stay tuned for just a few testimonies from our staff. It's like one big family, you know. It, it, it's a rewarding job, but it's also sad. I mean. It's just, you know that it's gonna happen yeah. to everyone, you know, but it's more like when you see it every day, when you come into work and you see, um, I don't know, it just it puts things into perspective a lot for you, mm -hmm. you know? Like, I'll look at my mom or my sister or, you know, my boyfriend and, you know, it, you put yourself in those people. Like, you just, you feel more grateful every day for oh, the yeah. things that you do have. Yes. And I've never, ever heard from other nurses or seen myself where a family didn't need something maybe something that wasn't provided through their insurance, or maybe maybe there was a loved one who was out of state and couldn't get to, you know, to their dying family member. Whatever it has been, they have met that need. I'm very proud um, um, that Fairhope made it through the pandemic with such grace and care. I mean, there were so many changes and um, so many, you know, things that we weren't expecting to happen, happened. And um, people just stepped up and care continued. And um, I think of the other hospice services in our area, um, I don't think they fared as well. And I think that's because um, we're a good team. We, uh, we help each other. And sometimes we grumble about it because that's the natural thing that people do. But we're always there for each other. I do wish people um, maybe were educated about coming on our service a little earlier. I do have a favorite story. So um, the chaplain that I reached out to, uh, remember I told you when I was considering that spiritual care position, his name was Kermit. And um, at that time I was working as a nurse and I was way below MacArthur, um, way back in the hills, no cell phone service, um, in a, a pretty uh, difficult situation. Um, I was taking care of a man who was having a pain crisis and I was there until he felt better and so I was working and working I would reposition and I would um, medicate and then I would um, uh, if, if he, he wasn't getting better so I called the doctor can we can we change his dose like I'm just I need to keep working until he's more comfortable and I would do the same things and he just I just had been working and working for like six hours and I couldn't, I couldn't get him completely comfortable. He was better, but he wasn't where I wanted him to be. And so Kermit had come. They had asked for a chaplain, and Kermit came. And he stood beside the man. That, while I was there, they delivered his bed. They, you know, I mean, just I could just see him getting more relaxed, more comfortable, but there was something that I wasn't getting to. So uh, Kermit stood beside his bed there and just began to talk to him, introduced himself, and 
you know, um, I want to help you. Um, what, what can I do to help you? And he said, my wife is in uh, Mount Carmel East. She had a stroke and I can't get to her. And Kermit prayed with him and encouraged him and uh, told him that certainly his wife knows that he wants to be there and that he can. And I saw Kermit do in 20 minutes what I couldn't have done, what I couldn't do in six hours. And it just made it very real to me that each part of the hospice team is very important. The nursing and the, you know, working with the medications until they're comfortable, that's a, per a, great, a very important piece. And the chaplain, who can meet that spiritual need, that's a very important piece. And the social workers who, you know, or would maybe in another situation would work to try to help him get to Columbus. You know, all of these are in the very important pieces of the whole picture, which is Fairhope Hospice. Hospice is personal to me. I think one of the most uh, difficult for me to understand is um, people think that hospice is just um, for the very last few days of life. At the end of the day when we're leaving or in the morning, I should say, since I work night shift, you know, people, the family members are just so thankful. You know, they make us little like crocheted little angels and, you know, just different little things to say thank you, get us donuts. <laughs> we don't need the donuts and the cookies, but they, they fill us with it. and. Um, they appreciate us and it just makes it that much better. Like I said, I did hair and I had a um, client that I did for many years and she came to me one day at the salon and um, made me cry. <laughs> she said, um, I'm, there was a reason why you went into hospice. Um, you're going to end up taking care of me because she found out she had you know, late stage cancer. And, um, you know, she asked me to shave her hair at the salon and um, to get her prepared for everything. And I did end up taking care of her here. And um, her hair had grown back a little bit. And uh, we were able to, you know, a few days before she passed, she wanted one final haircut. So we were able to get her up and let me give her a haircut. And I was able to say my goodbyes. And it was just as very special just to be at this part of her life and then also at the end of her life. Originally I am a hairstylist. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I did that for many years and I had a family member pass away here and because of the care that was provided not only to him but to our family it just really made me think well maybe this is something that I want to do something that I can do to give back to other people and so I went and took my nursing assistant and I said if I can't work for Fair Hope I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do it because I did hair that's what I did that was the career path that I originally chose and I got hired on and I've been here for 10 years I just think that what we provide here is just such an amazing service to the community to the families to the patients it really is top of the line quality care. Just they don't understand exactly what hospice care is and that it's actually end of life care and it's compassion and it's comfort care. And we still have patients that come in and family members that are fearful because they don't, it's unexpected. You don't, you know, they're at that end of the road of their life and they don't know what to expect. And they coming here is scary. And, um, once they're here, they don't want to leave <laughs> because of the care that we provide. One, one of the things that I, I've really come to value and appreciate uh, from Fairhope is the understanding that we're not teaching loved ones to move on. Uh, we're teaching them to move forward. I love people. I love connecting. When I was little, my parents always said, you could talk to a wall and get a response. Um, so it's just nice to, to also feel valued, too, that uh, they saw that I was able to connect with folks. and. Uh, to put me in this position to connect with individuals really means a lot and uh, it's just a great organization. <laughs> I really like it. When I tell folks that I work for Fair Hope Hospice, the response I get is, I couldn't do that. There's no way I could do that. How do you deal with death and dying and everything? What they're missing though, I think, is the beauty that comes from an organization such as Fair Hope, the care that these individuals are receiving, the difference that it's making in their families' lives. 
Um, it, it's actually kind of a, a beautiful thing when you're around individuals at the Pickering House who may be in their last moments because uh, they've provided so much empathy, so much support, and it's not necessarily death and dying. It's um, just that, again, that continue, uh, continuity of care. Um, you're providing <clears throat> loved ones with the opportunity to cherish their loved one, to provide dignity uh, to their loved one in their last moments. One of my favorite stories, I had the opportunity uh, to meet with, um, I think there were six or seven children uh, for a young gal, unfortunately, who was passing away from cancer. Um, I had the opportunity to go to their home and uh, with the PALS program I learned uh, some techniques to help the children understand what was going on with their mom. Um, one of the neat things was we created a pillowcase uh, with all of the children's handprints and then some pictures. One kid drew a Happy Meal because uh, he said mom would never let me have a Happy Meal. Um, another child drew a fortune cookie because uh, their favorite thing to do was to go to the local Chinese restaurant. Um, but anyway, after we had completed that with fabric markers, they washed the pillowcase and mom held that on her lap in her last moments. And it was just beautiful because we were able to say, you know what, in, in some, some way, shape or form, your mom was still holding your hand. And uh, they were at school when she passed, um, but to, to see how they grieved after, it just made a world of difference. Uh, these children handled it so well because they knew in some way, shape or another that their presence was with their mother in her last moment. And I just, I love that. Another part too, I, I work with uh, Tracy Miller, my manager, um, with the PALS program. And the PALS program goes into schools to talk to children who've lost their loved ones. Uh, sometimes it's the loss of a student, sometimes the loss of a teacher. It just really depends, but we typically spend about four sessions with the child um, in consecutive weeks, and uh, we provide them with resource material, with coping mechanisms. Um, and then uh, part of it too, we offer grief groups at various schools to help with those who may have lost a loved one you know, a few years ago, and now all of these emotions are coming up. Um, what's fascinating to me is to see that they've helped over 1,500 children uh, before I've come here and the repeats every now and then too, you know, if a child loses a grandparent um, or a parent, you know, they may receive services immediately after, but then you have those students coming back in their senior year or junior year saying, hey, I'm going to hit all these first without my loved one. What should I expect? And it's really neat to see the connection that they make with the PALS program, finding value in it, and then relearning some of the material we've shared uh, to help with those firsts. So I was actually a chaplain at Fairfield Medical Center for four years. And while I was over there, I came into contact with Fairhope uh, on numerous occasions. Um, and working with individuals at end of life uh, was very challenging, especially without a hospice agency like Fairhope. Having worked at the hospital though, I really valued the work that Fairhope was doing um, or providing patients. Uh, just seeing that smooth transition of care uh, was great and then to have collaboration with them I thought was phenomenal. I, Fairhope didn't come in um, with the notion that this is our territory, you know, we don't need your assistance. They actually embraced the, the collaboration and I thought that was wonderful. It is so important for families to feel comfortable and safe when they call because oftentimes that first phone call, even picking up the phone physically and just dialing that number is very hard. Um, you're asking for something that is a very difficult and private decision and so we want everyone to feel comfortable and safe that you pick up that phone, you make that phone call and let us just guide you and lead you where you want and then you can make an informed decision about what's best for you and your family. Where can I find advanced heart care? When you choose Fairfield Medical Center for your heart care, you'll find confidence in our expertise and peace of mind in our compassion. Your health is important, and our heart and vascular experts specialize in the latest technology and treatments to keep you feeling your best. Whatever you're searching for, you can find it at Fairfield Medical Center. You walked down the aisle and promised happily ever after. 
Sometimes happily ever after means ending a relationship. We know the conversations are not easy. Deciding what's best for you, your children, and your next steps takes work and communication. At Dagger Law, we know there are no monsters in a divorce, only people trying to find their way. Local, trusted, experienced. Dagger Law. The Frankie Smith Funeral Home and Crematory in Lancaster and the Johnson Smith Funeral Home in Baltimore have a long and wonderful history of serving our community. Feel free to give us a call at 740-653-0652. Stop in and see us at either of our two locations, 405 North Columbus Street in Lancaster and 207 South Main Street in Baltimore. Respect for tradition, regard for change. My name is Scott Duff and I'm the director of the Fairfield County Overdose Response Team and I'm here today to discuss Narcan. Narcan is the opioid overdose reversal medication. Narcan saves lives. We have saved countless lives in our community by providing Narcan to those with substance abuse disorders. We would very much like you to consider carrying Narcan on a regular basis. Narcan can be obtained easily in your community by reaching out to the Fairfield County Overdose Response Team at 740-901-1598. This message is brought to you by the Fairfield County Adam H. Board. The staff that have been here know what it takes. They've been on the other side. They see what it takes to make someone comfortable, to make the family comfortable, and really what kind of support they need. And so I think that's what really makes Fairhope what it is. Welcome back to Fairhope Hospice Today. Thanks for joining us again. So today we're trying something a little different. I'm on my own. Normally I have a, a partner with me and we have a topic that we discuss, but today as we start into the new year, I just thought it was really important for me to uh, really just talk about our staff. So if you were able to join us for the first segment, we showed you some great testimonies that really express what our staff here are all about, the heart and the passion they have to our mission here at Fairhope Hospice. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, I again want you to call 740-654-7077. Join us on Facebook or on our webpage, which is fairhopehospice.org. So for this segment, I thought we'd do something a little different as well. I'd like to talk about just uh, night, or I would like to talk about the last year, 2022. So as we are walking into January and 2023, Let's kind of touch base on some of the great things that, that Fairhope Hospice participated in last year. The first thing that we did the start of 2022 was our Fairhope Celebrates Life. That was an amazing event. All the funds that we raised for that went to our grief department. And as you know, we were able to um, complete a virtual event, which is the first time that we have done that here at Fairhope. It was a great success. We had lots of community support, lots of great sponsors, uh, lots of volunteers and staff and just community members that, that were able to go online, bid on our items, and we've had such great generous donors for those items. So stay tuned for more. We will have that event again here in April, so stay tuned for that event as well. So the second event that we did was always the fun and fabulous Trash to Treasure. That is the event that we hold at the fairgrounds in Lancaster, and our volunteers run that event. It is a well-oiled machine. We raise a lot of money. The volunteers raise a lot of money. Those are all items that people have donated, and just like its name, they're Trash to Treasures. So someone else is finished with an item, they send it over, and it becomes someone else's treasure. The volunteers work for a solid week, nonstop, on setting up just barns and areas at Fairfield uh, County Fairgrounds, getting ready for this event. We're so grateful and thankful for them. And, you know, we're just really proud to have them on our team. The next event 
is the Lancaster Festival, the Art Walk. So we were able again to participate at Fairfield Federal. We had the one and only Rick Schneider who presented his second book, as well as some artwork from some of our volunteers. So we are very thankful to Fairfield Federal and the uh, Lancaster Festival for allowing us to be a part of this special time downtown. It's always wonderful to be there downtown. So again, this year, stop in and see us. I want to go back just a second to uh, the 4th of July parade. That is always a fun event. Lots of volunteers and staff that are walking and riding. I always get to ride. Uh, we have lots of pets that follow along and just a great turnout. And something that's really special about the 4th of July parade as well as the Christmas parade is when you're riding and we're waving and we're talking to, to folks and seeing lots of friendly faces in our community, they always yell out to us. Thank you so much for, your, for what you've done for my family. Thank you for this. And, and those things are really nice to hear. You, you forget that you're in a parade setting and you don't expect to hear that. But when the community reaches out and they express their gratitude for what we do every day, it's very meaningful to our staff and our volunteers and, and myself. So thank you for that. The next event that we participated in is the Fairfield County Fair. And what an event that is. The last fair of the season. Um, just such a big event for Fairhope. We have had a, uh, a booth um, at the fair for many, many years. Again, our volunteers really step up. They man that booth the entire fair. So we have hundreds of people that, that come through and they talk about what we've done and how we've helped their family. And I think a lot of times when they stop by at those booths, that's a time for them just to really remember and offer a memory and just to think of their loved one fondly. The fair has a lot of great family memories for lots of us. And so when those, when those families stop by, they share those stories with our staff and our volunteers. It's really touching to us. So we're so glad to be a part of the fair. We also are at the Wolf Tent and we do a lot of events there on senior day. Um, we're just really involved with a lot of the veteran aspects at the fair. Very thankful, very proud, and uh, you'll have to stop and see us next year at the fair. The other event that we love to be involved in is Freedom's Never Free. So to me, that's a really special event here at the Pickering House and at Fairhope Hospice. We pin a lot of our veterans, which means we honor them with a recognition. Uh, we provide them or their family with a, a branch pin and a certificate thanking them for their service. So when we were asked to be involved in Freedom's Never Free at the fairgrounds, that's a really special event. And so our volunteers, myself, we step out and we honor the veterans who are there, who are there um, taking part in that event. We set the, the flags, um, the Field of Heroes, which is a really touching event for those um, veterans and, and folks who have served our country in one way or another. So we're really thankful that Fairhope can be such a, an important part of that. Um, those are just some of the really wonderful things that, that we do and we participate in here at Fairhope. So I'm thankful that we have the opportunity to do that, that the community really does just embrace us for all that we do. And, um, you know, we want to give back and, and share the gratitude that we have for being able to be a part of this great community. So as you're watching this segment today, I'm sure that you're enjoying some of the clips and some of the events that we've had over the past year. 2023 is here. We're going to we're going to get started. We are going to roll into this year with a new fresh start and to continue and to provide the great care that we always provide here at Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, home of the Pickering House. Thank you for joining us today on Fairhope Hospice Today, I'm Kristen Glazier, and remember, celebrate life. Interface Video presents Fairhope Hospice Today, brought to you by Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan, Fairfield Medical Center, the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities, Dagger Law, and the Frank E. Smith Funeral Home.